Have you ever wondered where business ideas come from? You are not alone. Millions of people have no idea what the answer to this question is. Maybe no one has even given it a thought. In today's episode, I'm going to share a story of a local boy who became a millionaire selling Gary to help you understand where business ideas come from. Without further ado, let's get started. Hey, I'm your man Pinkanti Himi Jumpo and welcome to another episode of SME Roundtable. In the year 2016, Tiso Alcosa turned 16, even though he looked 24. The boy lived in the environs that were opposite Benue State University, Makudi in Benue State. His father died when he was seven years. He moved to Makudi after passing out of primary school to live with his maternal uncle, Keisha. He hoped that his uncle would send him to school so that he would continue with his education. Unfortunately, that dream was cut short. Keisha, who worked with Benue State Ministry of Works, was a junior civil servant and was barely struggling to pay the tuition of his four children. He couldn't afford to take on an extra bill. Without education, Teso resorted to all kinds of manual jobs just to survive. There was a woman called Maggie who ran a store in front of the compound where Teso lived. She sold all kinds of provisions and stationary materials. So all day long, students kept trooping to her shop in order to buy one thing or the other. However, it was Gary that was the product with the highest turnover. So students bought Gary from the smallest measure, which was a tin of milk, to the biggest measure, which was a mudu of Gary, and they bought that in multiples, depending on their budget and their appetite for consumption. Without much to do, Teso sat under the mango tree that was 8 meters away from Maggie's store and observed how every time a student bought Gary, Maggie would turn the purchased quantity into a polythene bag, what we used to call Santana, and tie it to ensure that the Gary was secured and packaged properly. Growing up, we used to call this polythene Santana leather, or Santana for short. In the 80s, when this packaging product was invented, it was a major breakthrough in product packaging. I know this for a fact because I used to sell Santana in the marketplace at the age of 10. The women in the market would pamper me with little tips and encourage me to bring Santana to them ahead of their competition. It was a lot of fun. But back at home, there was even more fun. We would tie used Santana into a lump of mass and play it around a street football. I don't know whether this would pass for recycling, but if it does, it means the kids in my generation invented plastic recycling. How come we don't get credit for that? What I know for a fact is that street football was a lot of fun and Santana made it possible. It's interesting how today the world has demonized Santana as an environmentally hazardous product. Science has shown that polythene degrades the environment. And science doesn't lie, so more for renewable packaging materials. Adieu Santana. You were a hero of our packaging experience while we were growing up. It's unfortunate that you did not live long enough to see the old men and women that we have turned out to become. Anyways, back to the main story. Tiso made another curious observation at Maggie's stall. Anytime students came to buy Gary, they had sugar and granuts on their shopping list. Sometimes they ordered milk or kuli kuli, depending on their taste or budget. Strangely though, Tiso observed that on many occasions, when students came to buy Gary, they discovered that sugar and granuts were sold out. Anytime that happened, they grumbled because they had to trek to another store to be able to buy their sugar and granuts. Madam, why you know they ever get sugar and granuts anytime while I come buy Gary for your shop? 
Common granite, you no know, get. Sugar, you no know, get. Kuli kuli, you no know, get. I've been a bad thing to buy Gary for your shop. That was a rant of an angry and hungry student. Now, as quickly as he said that, other students chimed in to also express their frustration. To Teso's greatest dismay, Maggie was nonchalant to the student's agitations. In that very moment, a light bulb went on in his head. He had figured out a way to be able to solve this problem. What if I tie Gary, sugar, and granite in one Santana bag? Students don't go by. Eh, eh, then go by now. Teso talked loud to himself and was excited. He concluded that he has found a beautiful business idea to help students find dairy, sugar, granuts, kulikula, and all the other add additives in one location whenever they came to buy. That day, the light that went on in his head shone into the world through the brimming smile he had all day. Teso called his mother and shared the idea with her. They both agreed it was a brilliant idea. And his mother agreed to send him a bag of Gary to get him started. So the little money he had saved together, he bought a pack of Santana, he bought a muddle of sugar and a muddle of granite. The whole of that evening, he sat around sorting and packaging his new found product. Bye Gary, sweet Gary and granite. Bye Gary, sweet Gary and granite. Teso went from door to door in the student's hostel introducing his new product. And the students were super happy to, to buy from him. It was a cup of Gary and a measure of granite and sugar all tied together separately in one polythene bag. It was smart, it was handy and it was tacky. By 12 noon on that day, his newly launched product was sold out. That same day, he went back to the market and bought a pack of Santana, a muddle of sugar, and another muddle of granite to come and repeat the process all over. By the second week, Tesu was selling two muddle of sugar and two muddle of granite daily. By the fourth week, he had saved enough money for a bag of Gary and he found a way to send that money to his mother so that she could send him another bag of Gary. While he did that, he was left with half a bag of Gary. Call that his profit and you will be right. Fast forward to 2021 and Teso now has a shop on campus where he sells his products and several other confectionaries. He installed a Gary processing equipment in his village where his mom and other women that come to meet her mom process Gary for onward forwarding to Teso in Makudi. Now, Gary retailers in Makudi come to his shop in Wurukum Market, which is close to Bene State University, to buy Gary. The boy has become a big Gary merchant and he's happy to pay the tuition of his two younger siblings. The story of Teso demonstrates the great spirit of enterprise and it shows how smart entrepreneurs are reinventing the market on a daily basis by filling gaps that exist in products and services to bring more value to the customer. There are three takeaways from the story. One, what is how for a very long time Maggie had ignored the frustration that the students endured when they did not find their company condiments whenever they came to buy Gary. Teso saw this pain point, stepped up, and feels the need. If now you be Teso, tell me the truth. What do you for do? You for start this business? Talk to Biko. Number two. In today's business world, the mantra that customer is king is more apt than ever. Notice how Teso delivered his new product at the doorstep of his customers. That did not only eliminate the need for this student to travel from Maggie's shop to another one looking for condiments to add into Gary, but it completely removes the need for them to travel. So they got their products right at the doorstep. By bringing this product to their doorstep, 
Teso treated his customers like they were kings and they were happy to pay and reward him. You could say he went the extra mile for his customers. Anytime you go the extra mile for your customer, trust me, you are going to earn their loyalty. And loyalty is what determines that your customers are going to return back to you again and keep you in business. Number three. The third and final point is around the mantra, think big, start small. Notice how, like a lion, Teso zeroed in his focus to one thing, providing Gary with that company condiments, sugar, granuts, and quilipili. By doing so, he kept his cost of operations very low and would finance his entire startup operations without having to resort to borrowing. The only thing he spent money on was to purchase a pack of Santana, a moodle of sugar, and a moodle of granuts. The rest of it, he bootstrapped by doing it himself, by collecting a bag of Gary from his mother, who didn't have to incur an extra cost to produce Gary, by the way. She had cassava on her farm, we just pluck it, process Gary, and send it to, his, to her son. Contrast that with Maggie, who was selling almost everything. She was spread thin and had her attentions divided to in several places. That way she lost focus and was not able to listen, pay attention and listen to her customers' complaints. She had a clouded vision which lost track of the needs of her customers. That was what gave rise to Tesos stepping up to fill that need and completely take away the market from Maggie. By packaging Gary, sugar and granuts in one Santana and delivering it to the students. He perfected a trade and grew bigger, establishing two business locations. You can also see this trade in Amazon, the world leading e-commerce platform. They, to date, they have a market capitalization of $1.2 trillion. Notice how Amazon started off by selling one thing, which was books. With a few clicks, users of Amazon could just get the books, digital books on their devices and read or physical books delivered to them at their doorsteps. The focus on that gained traction and became big in the market and therefore had the, the muscle to diversify into various products. Today, there's no single product on earth that Amazon does not sell. The reason why they have simply become the biggest e-commerce platform in the world. When you start small and stay focused, chances are that you are going to grow big. Like Teso, think big and start small. So let's do a recap. I hope by now you already know that business ideas come from one, customer pain points, two, improving on existing ideas, and three, selling convenience. When you start small, but think big like Teso, your business will one day grow into a massive empire of wealth. Thank you for tuning into the SME Roundtable. Hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to help us bring more quality content to you. Check out the two videos on the screen. And don't forget to comment in the comment section about what else you learned from this story. If you have friends who will like this video, please, by all means, feel free to share it with them. See you in the next video.